Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Previously, we completed the first section of the game leading up to the end of the first set of poems. Now we're going to do the first set of side stories, which unlock after you do those aforementioned poems. Man, don't do this to me. You're making this seem way too happy. Okay, everyone. Literature Club is starting. Let's all have a seat and take attendance, okay? Uh, I miss debate club. Who knew it would be so difficult to start a new club? I feel worse with every day that passes without anyone coming in. I'm really starting to lose confidence. Monica is the only member of the Literature Club. The days have passed. All of her efforts to recruit new members have been fruitless. Am I going about this wrong? Monica glances at one of her flyers. The headline is, Do you like literature? Maybe nobody's into literature enough to pick it over their other club interests. Like anime. I can't just rely on people liking literature. I need to sell them on a vision. A vision. But what kind of vision? Monica rests her head on her desk, deep in thought. But before she realizes it, the recent nights of staying up too late start to catch up to her. It's so quiet, and the noise of the air conditioner is soothing. Um, hello? There was a flash there, but that might have just been like a little bit of a bug. Suddenly a voice causes Monica to snap awake. So I'm assuming this is going to be how they started the club. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I never do this. <laughs> is this the napping club? See, I told you. No, this is... Monica pauses. Suddenly embarrassed to admit that this is in fact the literature club. I mean the Doki Doki Literature Club trademark. This is the literature club. Yay, I thought I got wrong for a sec. I'm super sorry. It was like, so unprofessional of me to do that. Don't apologize. I do that all the time. Oh. Um, did I miss the club meeting? Where is everybody? Well, about that. This is everybody. Really? Just you? But we're getting more members. I'm working really hard on it. Hold on a sec. If it's just you... That means I get to be vice president. Wait, vice president? Um, what are your qualifications? Well, I'm better at napping than you. True. Maybe I should be president. Don't foreshadow me like this. Now you're just making fun of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what was your name? Sayori. Okay, Sayori. I've been trying really, really hard in this club. I know you caught me at a weird time, but... It's really disheartening to not be taken seriously, you know? I care so much about this. I just want to find other people who do too. Oh no. I'm so sorry. I do care, I promise. I have a hard time being serious, that's all. I didn't mean for it to hurt you. And I was joking about the vice president thing too. I would make a terrible vice president. I mean, I'm sure that... Maka tries to say something reassuring, but it's difficult when she still doesn't know much about Sayori. I'm sorry this isn't like a real club yet. Would you still be interested in joining after I found a few more members, at least? Well, no. I want to join now. Really? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Besides, I can tell how hard you've been working. You're doing something amazing, and you should be proud of it, you know? So let me help you turn something stressful into something fun. If nothing else, I'm good at that, so... <laughs> Honestly, how could I possibly say no to that? That's really sweet of you, Sayori. Oh, I'm Monica, by the way. Monica? Yeah, you can just call me just Monica. 
that's such a cool name. Oh, now you're just trying to cheer me up. It was a little weird being played, Monica. But you're smiling. Well, I didn't say it didn't work. Monica glances at the flyer on her desk and realizes that her name is already written on it. So what do we do first? Well, it's getting pretty late, isn't it? We can go home and try to come up with some new ideas to recruit club members. I can do that. Cool. And I think I need to put some more thought into my vision for the club. You know, like a mission. My mission is to make everyone happy. Uh huh. Yeah, something like that. I need to think about it. Hey, do you like hugs? I guess so. Sayori suddenly pulls Monica to a friendly hug. Then let's go. Some people can just really use a hug sometimes. Besides, Sayori whispers loudly. Hug energy is what keeps me at my best. <laughs> hug energy? Monica laughs. Although Sayori is very different from her, Monica feels her spirits lifted. Maybe it's just because she finally found another club member. But, well, I'm looking forward to tomorrow then. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna think really hard tonight about how to get more people. Bribe them. Yeah, me too. A day passes and the time comes for the literature club, Monica and Sayori, to re reconvene. As president, Monica ensures that she's the first to arrive to the club room. But she finds herself waiting longer than expected for Sayori. It's been 10 minutes already. Maybe Sayori changed her mind about joining. Nah, she just sleeps in and runs around toasting her mouth in the morning. Bumps in the people, you know the thing. So this gets hit by a truck and gets isegyed. No, that can't be. She was so excited yesterday. But I'm getting kind of worried. When's the Isekai spinoff of Doki Doki? Suddenly, Sayori comes bounding through the door. In her hand, she's holding a sheet of paper. Sorry, I'm late. I'm here. It's okay. Welcome back. And... Sayori spins over to Monica and deposits the sheet onto Monica's desk. Oh, what's this? Take my hand. Take my hand, take me forward. Take me to your dreamland. Caution me to watch my step so I can't look back at my footprints. Climb the stairs ahead of me. I look up to you. The more I look forward, the more I look up. The more I can lend to you. If you can trust me to follow your pace, I'll trust you to send it. If you can trust me to lend you a smile, I'll trust you to return it. Take my hand, take me forward. Take me to your dreamland. Hey, this is really good. You wrote this, Sayori? Of course. Wait. Wait, no, that's the wrong side of the paper. Huh? I wasn't really sure that yet. I'm so embarrassed. You can tell me because my eyes are doing that thing. Monica flips over the paper. Right on the other side is a list of ideas for recruiting new club members. Oh, so this is what you meant to show me. But I'm curious now. Do you write poetry often? I d do, but... So is Sayori the one who, like, introduced poetry to the club? I'm sure I'm not anywhere near as good as y you are. Oh, really? I'm actually terrible at writing poetry. I've never written anything I was happy with. Like, I always read it again a week after I write it, and I'm like, wow, this is so stupid. I don't know. It's like the dramatic version of me doesn't agree with the person I want myself to be, or something like that. Aw. You should have more confidence in yourself. You're the literature club president. <laughs> I guess you're not wrong there. I did like set a good example or whatever. Hmm. You know, I can envision the club doing something like that. Doing what? You know, like sharing poems we write and stuff like that. Oh yeah! I would love that. It's such a good way to learn about other people, you know? It's like, we have so many emotions that we can't express to other people usually. But when you can, you can when it's a poem, right? Yeah. I think that's helping me form a more cohesive vision of the club. So I'm glad you showed me. Well, even though it was by accident. Me too. I felt embarrassed at first, but now it feels kind of good that someone else read it. I'll try to show you more of them in the future. I'd love that. Oh jeez, I'm getting distracted. Do you want to go over this recruitment brainstorm together? My brain stormed so hard. It was like a brain hurricane. 
My brain is a natural disaster. <laughs> that's not a good thing, Sayori. Sayori, that's terrible. <laughs> same wavelength. We're on the same wavelength. Anyway, let's take a look at the list. And make cupcakes. I was hungry. But it's a good idea. Isn't it? We need to find a person who can make cupcakes. Perhaps someone with pink hair. Um, let me think about this. I mean, when we have the chance to give people cupcakes? You know, like when they come into the club? What if we said we had three cupcakes and the flyers? I'm like, kind of worried that would bring in the wrong kinds of people, you know? Wrong kinds? People would come just for the cupcakes and then leave? Oh, nobody would do that. That would be mean. <laughs> yeah, nobody. But you know, I want to find people who are really into literature. Even if they don't know it yet. Let's see, the next thing on the list. Hunt for people reading books. Yeah. I don't think I get it. Like going around the school to find people who are reading books, you know? Like in the morning or during lunch, and then harassing them? Maybe, you know, like tie them up and drag them back? And we tell them to check out the literature club. Well, the problem with that is like, wouldn't most people reading books just be doing it for an assignment or something? How would we know if they're just reading for fun? Um, well, we could ask them, but then we'd be bothering people who are trying to do schoolwork. I didn't think about that part, I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. You're coming up with a lot more things than I can. Oh, your next idea is hand out flyers. Rather than just put them up on the wall. I definitely like to start doing that. I'm useful. Heh <laughs> heh. I never said you weren't. I just need to think. What would we tell people when handing them out? I don't want to just be like, Join the literature club, Doki Doki. Let's forget how we can get better to engage people. What if we told them about the club activities and stuff? What club activities? Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be my job to come up with that, right? A vision for the club! Okay, Sayori, pretend you're a normal person for a second. Wait, I didn't mean it like that. Ha ha ha. You know, like a random passerby who gets a flyer. How would you react to the idea of a Doki Doki Literature Club trademark? Hmm. Probably like... Literature is stupid. I'm joining the anime club. What the heck? Haha, <laughs> sorry. Just thinking of a friend of mine. Okay, what if I said that we, like, do a group reading and discuss it together? I'd probably nap through that. And <laughs> that's you, Sayori. Yeah, but that doesn't really sound fun to most people anyway. We need to really catch your interest, you know? We'll need to spice it up with a little bit of horror. Uh... That sucks. Why is this so hard? Monica... Don't be sad. What do you like about literature, Sayori? Me? Well, kind of what I said about the poem earlier. I think it gives you a chance to express yourself. Like, express yourself in ways you can't normally do when you're just doing your normal day and talking to your friends. I mean, we all have so many thoughts and feelings that we just don't get to share, you know? It's like... intimate. Yeah. How do we get that to cross the people? It could be like, express your true self. Be intimate with us. No. Okay, that's kind of... that's... that's only for the main character. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. What? What is it? I forgot all my things in my classroom. I must have gone too excited and rushed here. Silly me. Rush? But weren't... Oh, never mind. Did you want to get your stuff then? I'll forget if I don't do it now. <laughs> well, I'll wait for you then. Okay, only take a second. Sayori dashes out of the room, leaving Monica momentarily alone. Monica sighs and starts jotting her fonts on a sheet of paper. Express yourself. Be who you want to be. Make new friends. Discover a new you. Discover your heart. No. Write your heart out. No. Write it into your heart. Write the way into your heart. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart. Well, that's lame. Monica! Ah, you stalled me. Uh, sorry, but something important. On the way to my classroom, there was a girl reading a book. Reading a book? Let's hurry and recruit her. Wait, are you sure she's not just doing homework? I could tell she was really into it. Um, well, I guess we could 
take a look. Monica grabs one of her flyers and stands up from her desk. The two depart the classroom with Sayori leading the way. It's gonna be Yuri? This way. You don't have to run. Oh no, it's, it could be also, uh... Yeah, we'll see. Sayori leads Monica over to a particular classroom and lowers her voice to a whisper. See in here? Monica peers through the window. Soon enough, there's a girl sitting alone, intently reading a book. I feel like a creep doing this. You should go inside and talk to her. Me? You're the president. I would probably scare her away. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Monica takes a deep breath, then timidly enters the classroom. That was fast. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Why, what happened? Um, well, I entered the classroom, and she didn't even look up from her book. So I kind of just left the flyer on her desk, then walked out. Ha ha ha. That's kind of cute. But I'm sure she'll see it and want to join the club. I hope so. Should we head back now? The two head back to the club room. Sayori so feeling rather accomplished, and Monica still feeling a bit embarrassed by the encounter. Upon returning, Monica and Sayori resume their strategy meeting. They discuss various different kinds of recruitment tactics from professional to silly. After going through Sayori's list, and with Monica come up with ideas of her own, the two end up in a better spot than from where they began. Well, I wouldn't say today was pretty productive, wasn't it? Yeah. I think we're starting to make progress. I can't wait to get some new members. Hey, what's this? Sayori appears at the sheet of paper Monica was jotting on earlier. Oh, don't mind that. I was just thinking to myself. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart? That's so kawaii. Ha ha ha. I thought it was a little overdramatic. But... Sayori pauses and thinks for a moment. You know, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. What? What do you mean? Like... I don't know, I feel like I can tell from talking to you today. It seems like you're always afraid of doing something wrong. Yeah, but... Would you call yourself a perfectionist? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely am. I mean, I always have an idea in my head of how I want things to go. And it's like, I can't accept anything less than that. But I think in the end, it helps me try my hardest at everything. So I don't think it's that bad. Like with this club, you have such an opportunity to make it exactly how we envision it. But it feels like we only have one shot at it. So I'm just really afraid of it deviating from that. The vision. What's the vision? It's... Monica pauses to think, then shakes her head to herself. She sighs. I don't know. I just want everyone to... Monica trails off. Smiling, Sayori taps her finger against a sheet of paper. Write the way into your heart. I think what you're trying to do is to make the club that you need the most out of anyone. Well, you're the one who knows yourself best, of course. But I'm here to help you. Monica returns Sayori's smile. It's sort of amazing how kind you are. We're really going to make this the best club ever. Sayori nods and the two remain silent for a moment, lost in thought. The only sound is a steady whisper of the air conditioner. And the only movement is the afternoon sunlight, trickling its way in and out of the moving clouds. Sayori breaks a moment with a big yawn. Time to go home? You tell me. You're the president. Ha <laughs> ha. In that case, today's meeting is officially over. I look forward to it tomorrow. Me too. Sayori beams and grabs her things. You can go on ahead. In a few minutes still. Oh, I can wait. <laughs> That's alright. I just want some alone time. Away from you. Hmm. In that case. Sayori waves enthusiastically at Monica. Good luck. Monica smiles and waves in return as Sayori spins her way out of the club room. All alone, she sighs to herself and takes a minute to zone out. She wasn't prepared for the self-reflection encouraged by Sayori, but she decides it was something she probably needed right about now. The club that I need the most. I don't get it. I just wanted to start a club with more passion. Something that I could use to help lead people to happiness. Literature is the key to that, because it's the window to the real person inside of us. Underneath the person who's forced to always smile and blend in. The person who's forced to be... Perfect. Hmm? Monica suddenly notices a folder on the floor by her desk. Did Sayori leave this behind? I hope it doesn't have her homework in it. Worried, Monica opens the folder to check. Poems. It's a folder of poems. Become the flower. A feeling of joy is a flower plucked from the ground. The color, the scent, it's so pretty in my hair. Every day, I pluck some flowers as though they grew just for me. 
a lifetime of peace and nourishment, yanked away in an instant, offered me, offered joy. I need more, I need more joy, I need more happy. Pluck, pluck, pluck every day. Pluck, 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 so pretty in my hair. Pluck, 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 you're going to die, you too. Beneath my feet, a flower stands alone. It beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends? I look in every direction, and the field I stand in, the prosperous field, is a barren wasteland. The fruits of my labor, the carnage of my joy, and that's why I decided I must become the flower. Uh oh. And she plucks the flower too. That's not good. What the? Wait. Sayori. So it looks like part two actually does unlock right away. So yeah, we're going to end up doing all six of these. I'm not sure they're counting the six as all of these, or if they're counting it as there's another like row that's going to lock down here. We'll see. Another day passes in the flash. It's already time for the next club meeting. Although Monica should have come up with a plan for today's club tasks, she hasn't been able to shake her guilt and anxiety after reading Sayori's poem. I'm so stupid. How did I let myself be the center of attention? Sayori's going for these kind of feelings, and I'm letting her comfort me instead of the other way around. What kind of club president does that? This whole time, I didn't think to ask about her own feelings. So much for that stupid vision. Sayori enters the club room with her usual smile, but upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades into an expression of concern. Monica? Is everything okay? I'm really sorry. I'm such a terrible friend. Huh? What are you talking about? You're an amazing friend. Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself. Even you said so yesterday. You told me that I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Sayori responds quietly. What are you talking about? As she says that, her face darkens. Through the silence, Sayori mutters her realization. I left my folder here. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. I wasn't ready to share those. Now you're worrying about me. I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Friends look out for each other. I want to be here for you as much as you're here for me. Another long moment passes in silence. The air is incredibly heavy. This is different. It wasn't just about you yesterday. It was about the club. Besides, things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do this all of a sudden. I don't want it. I like happy. So, if you do this, then you're just being selfish. Monica massages her forehead, struggling through the frustration of such a paradox. It's understandable that Sayori isn't ready to share certain things. But as unfair as it is for Monica to pry, it's also painful for Monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend. I'm sorry I looked. I disrespected your privacy. No, I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Yeah. Monica takes a deep breath. Okay. I understand you don't want me to worry. And I think I'll be able to put this aside, so that we can move on. But can you promise me something? Promise you what? Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. This is the Literature Club. It's a place where people can express themselves in the ways that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the vision. In fact, it's our vision. Write the way into your heart or whatever. So, I just want you to promise me that you'll remember that too. It doesn't have to be right now, but I want you to be here for when you need it. I want us to be ourselves like that. Sayori smiles gently. I'll promise if you promise. Unable to help it, Monica returns Sayori's smile. I promise. Me too. As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed with the club activities. So, want to teach me about poetry? Huh? But what about recruitment? 
It's fine, we have plenty of time for that. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. I mean, I do have to fulfill my end of the promise, you know. <laughs> There's no way I could say no to that. Just don't expect much. I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a scholar or anything. That's fine. I think I just need, like, some motivation. I never know where to start when it comes to writing poems. Starting isn't so hard. You kind of just need to write down your feelings and see where it takes you. Yeah, but that wouldn't come out any good. It's not supposed to. You're going to have to fight your perfectionist mind on this one. <laughs> you can just start by writing your feelings and see what kinds of things it makes you think of. And then you can turn your feelings into a little story. Hmm. You can get your feelings down first and then make it sound pretty later. It's like... It's not like building a railroad where you go from one end to the other. It's more like a collage, where you find all the things you want to put in, and then you arrange them in a pretty way. At least, that's how I do it. It's not like it's the ever only way, but it's a really good way to not get stuck at the right at the beginning. I understand. Yeah, I always get so caught in how it sounds, I forget, but what's actually important? Monica pulls down a pen and paper to start writing on. Stop being a perfectionist. You baka. I'm just kidding. Monica scribbles out Ubaka after she writes it down. No, keep it. You know, the Ubaka part. What? Why? Are you calling me a Baka? Of course not. But the point is that you're not supposed to police your feelings, right, Ubaka? Be as dramatic as you want. Um, I was just... Well, yeah. Underneath the scribble, Monica rewrites Ubaka. She stares at the paper. Her words stare back at her. It's kind of funny I wrote down what I'm mad at myself for. The exact same thing anyway. This is really going to take some getting used to. I believe in you. Thanks. I do too. Me, I mean. But also you, of course. Haha. <laughs> Monica could use the exercise jotting down her thoughts. It's surprisingly quite a struggle to write without overthinking it. But after a while, with Sayori's guidance and encouragement, Monica's sheet of paper begins to look fairly lively peppered with all of her random thoughts. Phew. Monica looks up and down at her sheet. Gosh, I feel so tense looking at this. I hate it. But it's also kind of liberating. Hmm. I can tell how hard you're trying. It makes me happy. I think you'll be good at writing poems. <laughs> Don't give me too much credit. I have to try really, really hard at. But I think it's something that I'll enjoy doing. With you. For a while. Hopefully. Maybe. Sayori beams. I'll stop here. But we still have time. Let's try to work on the new flyer for the club. It won't be so- I won't be so picky about the language. Yay, let's do it. Monica and Sayori proceed with their work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. Not simply from their recruitment planning, but from their vision as well. As their bond strengthens, so does the essence of the Doki Doki Literature Club trademark. Finally, they begin to truly feel it's only a matter of time before they find more members. Another day passes. As usual, Monica is the first one to the club room. With her is the printout of the Revised Literature Club flyer, complete with the all-new ideas Monica and Sayori come up with. If only this was the flyer we gave that one reading girl the other day. It's so much more attractive than the old one. But... The new catchphrase is featured clearly in the center of the flyer. Write the way into your heart. Surely common sense would say that the one writes from the heart, not into the heart. But the message being delivered is that one can use writing to discover themselves. Hopefully Monica and Sayori had thought it would be enough to garner some curiosity from students. Everybody can cook. Why do I feel so tense looking at this? Monica thinks back to the previous meeting when she performed the writing exercise. Was I always this bad at expressing myself? How am I supposed to be president if I can't even demonstrate what the club is supposed to be about? The literature club is truly beginning to take form. But with that, the weight on Monica's shoulders only becomes heavier. The bait club was always about rigid structure, formulating airtight points and counterpoints and delivering them with conviction. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It existed entirely within her realm of comfort. It's suffocating. I need to break through this mental wall. I need to learn to express myself. For real. Monica pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses the tip of the pen firmly against the paper. 
but her hand doesn't move. Instead, a tiny blot of ink collects around the tip of her pen. Monica lifts her pen and stares at the little blotch. For some reason, she feels compelled to run her fingers across it. As she does show, the black ink smears across the paper, ruining Monica's canvas. Ugh. Out of spite for herself, Monica presses her pen down once again, letting the ink collect. She creates a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica. Just move your hand. Monica writes. This is what I get for seeking perfection. A stain. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her head down on the desk. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here. Hi. Monica hears Sayori approach her desk, then stop for a second, probably reading the piece of paper. Then she sits down in the adjacent desk. Bad day? Mm-hmm. Me too. You too? The new flyer looks so good. You've been working so hard. On the club, but also something else, I think. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's so hard to just be vulnerable. Hmm. She already takes a sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down and stares at it for a while. Can I trust you? Of course. You can trust me with anything. Sayori gazes at Monica with sadness in her eyes. Understanding the signal, Monica takes the paper from Sayori's desk and reads it. Sometimes I want to die. Sayori! This is really, really hard for me. Her voice shakes. So if I can do it, then you can too. Because... You're like a million times better than me. That's completely not true. Sayori takes a deep breath, trying to steady herself. That's something about me that I've never told anyone before. Even now, my head is, like, screaming at me to stop. Wait, you don't... You don't have to force yourself. I mean, just because of the promise yesterday. I want to. It just feels right. I mean, maybe it's part of the reason I came to this club in the first place. This is the Literature Club. I trust you more than I'm scared. At those words, Monica stands up. Sayori must have taken days to work up the courage for this. Were Monica's own futile but genuine efforts actually the push that Sayori needed? Sayori's deliberate breaths can be heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares herself to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. I can't control it. It's like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you can just be happy instead? So I never tell anyone about these kind of thoughts that I have. It's so much easier to just smile and help everyone else be happy. But that's... Terrible. That's what Monica wants to say. But she stops herself in fear of saying the wrong thing. It's just that if everyone knew about it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. Like whenever I'm not smiling, everyone would worry about me and ask me what's wrong. I know that, because it used to be like that. Sayori so pauses, seeming to recall something in the past. I just want everyone to be happy. That's the most important thing to me. And letting people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone. Sayori so pauses again, her solemn expression making her look almost like an entirely different person. How did you find the courage to tell me this? You're not worried that I'll be one of those people too? I am worried. Part of me really hates myself for doing this. But never part of me, I think, just felt like it would be different this time. Whenever we talk about what the club is supposed to mean, I kept feeling like it was the right for me to do. Especially after you've been trying so hard to express yourself too. It just made me feel like I could say it in confidence. And our friendship doesn't have to change. Uh -huh. It's so silly. The club is only two people, but it already means this much to me. Monica feels a tightening sensation in her heart. A feeling of connection, as Sayori's emotions radiate between them. 
Me too. I was so lost until you showed up. You're so brave, Sayori. You're so strong and brave. I don't even compare. Monica steps forward. But if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hug energy. If you'd like. Wordless scene without a smile, Sayori rests her forehead on Monica's shoulder. Through their contact, Monica can almost feel the torrent of thoughts swimming in Sayori's head. And in this moment, enchanted by the air of the club, Monica realizes that all the days that have passed, this is the one where she really, really hopes that nobody new walks through the door. Which they will. She speaks softly. You're like the sweetest girl I've ever met. You can say anything. I'll never judge you. I promise. Sayori's breath begins to quiver. She takes several deep breaths, trying as hard as she can to start speaking, to say the thing she never once dared to say out loud. Finally, she speaks in a choked voice. I'm so worthless. I'm worthless and everyone would be better off without me. She suppresses a sob as a tear falls down her cheek. I'm just an inconvenience to everyone. I'm not good at anything. And it just feels like everyone just has to put up with me. And I hate it. I hate it. The more Sayori speaks, the more she feels to control her voice, falling victim to the overwhelming sadness, clutching at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts. I want them to go away. And now I'm making you probe with me, and I just want to die. As soon as Sayori loses her composure, Monica becomes determined to keep her own. She only wants to be what Sayori needs right now. So she won't let any nice sadness show. Her voice comes through as soft and gentle. This isn't putting up with you. It's just being your friend. Monica offers a few words of comfort. But she knows, Sayori said it herself, that the thoughts Sayori experiences are the ones that don't belong. And Monica can't magically make them go away. The most she can do is help Sayori battle them, like any good friend would do. You have so much value. To me, and your other friends too. This club wouldn't have been the same without you. I really, really mean that. You coming here was the best thing that could have happened. Even if we never got any other members, I would still be happy. That's what you brought here. You brought us a vision, and you also brought us happiness. And that's your favorite thing to do, right? Sayori doesn't respond, but Monica feels her gently nod. No more words are needed between them. The two share their embrace for a while longer, Monica letting Sayori take as much time as she needs. Once her breathing steadies and her sniffles fully cease, Sayori lifts her hand and wipes her eyes. I guess I needed that. Some days are harder than others. Well, I'm here. Whenever you need me. But any other time, and I'll make sure that things are the way they usually are. If that's what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks. You're the best. I am. No, you are. The two exchange smiles. You know, I'm sorry to bring this up all of a sudden, but have you considered talking to a professional? Sayori nods. It's scary, since it's already so hard to tell people. Yeah. Well, of course it would always be your choice, but if you're ever looking to find the courage for it, I could do my best to help you. Thanks. I think it helps knowing that you would. Sayori suddenly yawns and stretches. Well, that made me tired. And hungry. <laughs> well, I won't make you do any work today if you're not up for it. No, I want to. I mean, I guess it's definitely one thing that makes me happy. Monica smiles. But I might want to get a snack first. All of a sudden, the sound of the door causes the two of them to turn their heads. The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. Is it you, Yuri? A face that seems familiar. Well, we'll never find out. <laughs> That was a very heartwarming one. Oof. So that was trust. Now we're gonna do the understanding side story. The club meeting is suddenly interrupted by the sound of the door, causing Monica and Sayori to turn their heads. The door opens halfway and then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. This is a direct continuation of, like, the previous one, I think. 
Sayori's eyes widen, recognizing the girl. She's very conspicuously mouths to Monica. It's her. It's the girl. It's true. The girl staying in the doorway is none other than the girl Sayori had come across reading alone in the classroom. Thanks to Monica leaving a fly on her desk, it seems she's found her way to the club. Are you here for the literature club by any chance? Um, am I in the wrong place? No, you're not. This is the literature club. Please come inside. The girl fully steps in the door, but continues standing against the wall, avoiding eye contact. Come on in here. We know your archetype. Don't worry about it. We're not gonna... We're not gonna bite yet. Give us a couple hours. Sayori continues to fail containing her excitement. It's happening. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for coming. Sorry it's a little empty like my soul. Um, I'm Monica, and this is Sayori. We run the literature club. Even though it's just us so far, but... What's your name, by the way? I'd like to join your club. Already? Wait, really? Are you sure? I mean, I should be good enough. Oh, everyone is welcome here. You don't have to be good enough. Oh. Um, do you want to have a seat? We'd love to get to know you. The girl nods, sliding over to a nearby desk and gently sitting down. So what's your name? Yuri. I'm Sayori, and this is Monica. Sayori, I already... Nice to meet you. Um, do you like fantasy? Like books? Yuri looks at Monica. Fantasy is cool! Yes, have you heard of Annabelle Dupont? C you can't say I have. Oh, well, she's my favorite author. I'm on her fifth book, and it's just... Yuri grins and presses her knuckles against her cheeks in joy. You can borrow my books. I wouldn't mind. You're really in for an incredible experience. Um... Monica stammers, cut completely off guard by Yuri taking control of the conversation. She glances sideways at Sayori, suddenly asking for help. I'd love to. It's not like you're really into them, so they must be great. I'm so happy I found this club. Oh, I'm so stupid. I left all my other books in my locker. I should have brought them. He really quickly stands up. I'll be right back. I'll go get them for you. Oh, you probably only need to bring one for now. Sayori nervously says that, knowing to herself the considerable heftiness of the book that Yuri set down on her desk. True. Okay, I'll go get the first one then. Yuri exits the clubroom in a flash, leaving Monica and Sayori silently exchanging glances. Oh my god, I wasn't prepared for this. How do I handle someone so intense? I have, like, no experience with fantasy, except maybe stuff that I read when I was a kid, but that's probably like a joke compared to what she's into. Me too, I mainly read non-fiction. I'm sure it'll be fine, aside from manga and stuff. In fact, I think it's neat that we have different people who are into different kinds of literature. It'll be fun to learn from each other. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but... What if this is our only interest? Does this kind of seem like that? Monica, don't you think you should be more optimistic? We have a new club member. There shouldn't be room for anything but being happy. I'm excited to get to know her more. Aren't you? Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry for being so hasty. I just got really anxious all of a sudden. It's because you're afraid of not being able to take the lead. <laughs> what the heck? It's kind of scary how you can point things out like that, Sayori. It's just like learning what makes people happy or sad. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You'd probably be great at helping Yuri feel comfortable here. Maybe you could take a break from helping me with the Ministry of Stuff, and just focus on spending time with her. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Besides... Sayori lowers her voice. I'm probably gonna need all the time I can get. She taps her finger against the donnelly chunky book Yuri left sitting on the desk. Right afterwards, the door opens to reveal Yuri's return. I'm back. Her breath is suddenly heavy, which combined with her short time gone, indicates she may have ran at least part of the way. She makes her way back over to Sayori and sets the book down on her desk. Just as Sayori feared, the book Yuri brought for her is just about equal in size to the one already on Yuri's desk. Well, there are probably a few things you should know before getting started on it. There are some things that are more explained in the other books that take place in the same universe, so going over those would be good to keep you from getting confused at the start. Um... Sayori so nervously interjects. Well, I was thinking that maybe today, we could just get to know each other a little bit more. You know, I think like, 
If we're gonna be reading together, then I would like that. From across the room, Monica smiles and nods at Sayori while Yuri isn't looking. That's right, Sayori, you tanked the hits. You hail all this social stuff. Oh. Okay. Yuri sits down and looks at her book, then glances around the room, showing no indication that she has anything more to add. So, what made you decide you wanted to join the club? Well, I like reading, so I was immediately interested. I had no idea that someone was starting a literature club, but that's my fault, since I haven't been paying attention to any of the club recruitment advertisements. I only found out because she... Yuri glances over at Monica. Monica? Monica came into my classroom and put the flyer on my desk, then 360 and walked right out of there without saying anything. Like someone who's very socially awkward. Suddenly Yuri's face darkens, and she shakes her head at herself. I was so stupid. I got too nervous and couldn't even look up. So she just walked out. It took me several days just to come here because I was afraid that Monica told everyone how inconsiderate I was, but decided that was probably irrational. Wait. No, that was totally my fault. It was, Monica. That was totally my fault. I felt so bad about interrupting you that I just, like, walked out. I was actually really hoping that you would come by. Yuri exhales in relief. I always seem to interpret things as the worst possible scenario. Well, I was really nervous to come here for some other reasons, too. Such as there being too many people. Not that I mind that much, but I have a really hard time having to meet a large number of new people at once. So it's actually amazing that it's just the two of you. I definitely came at the right time. Oh, and that makes me happy. I'm proud of you for working up the courage to come. Yuri smiles warmly to herself. I've never really had the privilege of sharing my interests with others before. It's so hard to find others who are into the same thing as I am, except online. And we all know how that goes. So I thought the Literature Club would provide a chance for me to do that. What kind of other things are you into? Like, genres? I don't know, just anything, even if it's not literature. Oh, uh, just things you would think are dumb. So Yuri pauses, a look of concern on her face. How about... I'll tell you about something I'm into, and you can tell me about something you're into. See, so always like, emotionally tuned into people, man. I suppose that would be okay. Okay. Well, I'm pretty into, like, crafting things. Crafty things. Hmm. Like making cute little collages or decorating things like cards or jewelry boxes. My room's always cluttered with random stuff because I keep buying things to make gifts for my friends. But then I put it off to the last minute. <laughs> So yeah, that's something I'm kind of silly that I'm into. You sound quite creative. Not that much. It's just that you'd be surprised by how much you can do with scissors and glue and stuff. So I have to share something like I'm into now, right? Sayori nods. Um, well, I guess I'm into nature. I love nature. Monica, I'm gonna start a nature club. No, you're not. You're stuck over here with me now. I'm not. Oh yeah? Well, here I appoint you as Vice President of the Literature Club. Dun dun da. There, now you're stuck with me. Hey, don't give me responsibilities. Oh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I interrupted you. Go ahead. It's fine. Yuri pauses, feeling awkward after I've gotten cut off. I like going out into the woods, or to the park. Just places where you can walk or sit and not have any people around. It's peaceful. I like peace, too. It's just nice to find, kind of remove myself from everything that matters and let my racing mind operate autonomously for a while. When do you like to do that? It just depends on my mood. After school, on the weekends, whenever I feel like I need it. Wow, I feel like I would never have the time to do something like that. I find that we have a lot more time than we think we do. If you don't let it slip through your fingers, it's true. The three continue their conversation, led primarily by Sayori, but with Monica chiming in every now and then as well. Monica had intended to leave it to Sayori, and focus on her own work, but she found it difficult not to join in. Before they knew it, the end of the day was upon them once more. Oh, looks like we should be wrapping up for today. So are you two going to be starting on that book the next club meeting? That's the plan! I'm so excited. Sayori beams. Yuri collects her things. Once packed, Yuri wordlessly waves to Sayori and Monica with a gentle smile. Bye! As Yuri exits, Sayori enthusiastically returns her farewell. Once again, Sayori and Monica are left in the club room. Sayori, you are a lifesaver. <laughs> I didn't do anything. 
I just talked. Still. Besides, it really lifted my mood. It feels really nice when I can put my energy toward other people like that. She was really excited to be included, you know. It made me happy. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll have a great time here. With you engaging her. How are you feeling about storing the book with her next meeting? I'm kind of scared. But I think she'll be happy as long as I'm trying my best. I think you'll do great. After the surprise of a new club member, it seems like everyone has their spirits lifted with something new to look forward to. And her school day ends. Swallowing her anxiety, Yuri makes her way to the club room, expecting to be the last one to arrive. As she opens the door, she's surprised to find only Sayori in the club room. It's club time again. Monica went to the computer lab. So it's just us today. Is that okay? Yuri suddenly nods, unable to make eye contact. Um, I'm sorry about yesterday. Hmm? Sayori tilts her head. Unsure exactly what Yuri's talking about. Well, I mean, the way I got overexcited to share my books, now he had to stop me so we could talk first. It was so inconsiderate of me. I got too excited. Forgot to think about everyone else in the club, so. <laughs> Yuri, you didn't do anything wrong. I thought it was cute how excited you were. Well, still, I think I changed my mind about the book. We don't have to read it. Huh? Why? Because I know that you were just human me anyway. In retrospect, it's rather obvious that nobody was truly interested. But if you like it so much, then it must be worth sharing. I've already decided I'll join the club. So you don't have to try so hard to entice me. That's not what I was doing. A moment of comfortable silence stretches between the two of them. Um, well the thing is, we don't even have any club activities yet. I mean, Monica and I have just been working on recruitment stuff, mostly. So it just sounded like something fun that we could do together, reading your books. You know, like, as a club activity. That would be okay, right? Why am I being so resistant to this anyway? It's exactly what I want in the first place. And you're being so nice about it. I really don't know what's wrong with me. I'm sorry for being like this. You don't have to apologize. Just tell me if there's anything I can do to help you feel more comfortable here. Hmm. So Yuri pulls her desk up against Yuri's and sits next to her. The book in question is rolled already on Yuri's desk. Peering over, Sayori reads the cover of the book. Dusk Bell. Part 1 of the Everlast Saga. Well, this could be everlasting, alright. Oh, it's Dusk Bell by Annabelle. Sorry, I'm ready now. Alright. I should probably get some paper. Yuri grabs a sprawl notebook of hers and tears out a few sheets of paper. Wait, how come you need paper? Take notes, of course! Oh, it's useful to draw things out sometimes. Like maps, timelines, family trees, or just for taking notes. Well, you're actually pretty hardcore. I admire that. I really I really admire that. That type of, like, person who's really into something. That's dedication. Notes? Uh, I mean... Oh, yes. That's an effective strategy. Exactly. I'm sure it will be especially helpful for someone new to the genre. Yes, you'll wait, Sayori. Pretty soon, you're gonna know what everything happens and where and what and when. Did you know this wine and this one scene comes from this region right here that I drew in this map? <laughs> Sayori's choke flew completely over Yuri's head. But thinking about it, she decides that's probably for the best that it did. Well, I'm not used to having company through this, but I'll try to help make it as accessible as possible. I trust you. You're like super smart. Oh, please. Yuri tries to dismiss the compliment. But she can't hide her smile and light blush. You can't generalize intelligence. I'm only smart in the things I have a lot of experience with. Contrarily, I'm all with anything involving real people. That should be evident enough from the two days I've spent here so far. So in my eyes, it's everyone else who comes off as smart. Especially you. No. Sayori rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. You're such a sweetheart when you're not being shy. Anyway, would you like to get started? <laughs> okay. After the minor diversion between the two of them, the two get back on track with their planned club activity. Yuri begins to guide Sayori for the basics of the fantasy world her story takes place in. The more that she details, the races, the factions, history, elements, and magic, the more questions Sayori seems to have. But despite Sayori's expectations, 
Yuri eloquently guides her through it in a way that's such that it's fun to follow along. It becomes evident that the world-building aspect of the story, not just the story itself, is the one that Yuri finds her passion leaning towards. How do people come up with this stuff? It's like the exact opposite of the kind of writing that I do. What kind of writing? Oh, like poetry and stuff like that. The things I write are just like putting down the feelings that come to my head, you know? But this is like, there must be so much planning and hard work. Ah, you went to poetry? I think there's an appendix that includes some of the kingdom's written works, like poetry and folk songs. No way! Ha <laughs> Yuri giggles, flings at Yuri's heart with happiness when she realizes it's the first time she's heard Yuri laugh. It means Yuri must be having fun. Anyway, I think we can get started reading now, if you're ready. Okay, but I can't read very fast. Oh, that's fine. I'm very patient. Patience is something I pride myself in. Hmm, I see. So Yuri jots Yuri's patient to her notes. Hey, that's for the book. <sighs> I'm just kidding. I'm glad you're patient, because I need that sometimes. A lot of times. Sayori flips through the first few pages of the book, getting past the table of contents. I feel like these side stories really flesh out Sayori. Because of all the, the routes, she sometimes is a little lighter in characterization. And this makes, definitely makes her feel more of like a main character. Okay, chapter one. The room becomes silent as the two of them begin to read. But the silence only lasts for a moment before Sayori speaks up again. What does vindicated mean? Uh, well, in this context, it essentially means that he was proven innocent. It's okay to ask questions, right? Of course. Sayori turns the page. Are these... footnotes? Mm-hmm. A lot of the dialogue has cultural references that require explanation to be understood. Hmm. The two continue reading. Yuri's relaxed expression remains unchanged. Meanwhile, Sayori's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the dense text. Up until now, their expressions had been reversed with Sayori easily navigating social situations, and Yuri struggling in them. But the tables have turned. Wait, are they talking about the past right now? Or the present? Where? Right here. Both. They're talking about the past. These paragraphs are describing a flashback that Barnas is having. But they didn't tell me that. It's implied from the context. Sayori rubs her temples. The two of them continue, with Sayori asking fewer questions. She begins to understand the value of notes, and she finds herself referring to them somewhere often, even adding to them. But her reduction in questions comes not from her getting used to the reading, but rather from her fearing that she'll come across as stupid. I mean, baka. At last, Sayori reaches the end of the chapter. I think we can stop here for now. Okay, oh thank god. Sayori takes a deep breath and closes what little of the book she's gone through so far. So what are your thoughts up to this point? Um, Sayori tries to find words. Am I doing well so far? Hmm? I'm not sure I understand. Well, I don't know. When it takes me so long to read and understand things, it makes me feel really dumb. <laughs> but I really like how I get into it you get. It makes me want to keep going, and to keep doing my best so I can see it to the way that you do. The relaxation in Yuri's expression fades. I see. Yuri quietly gathers her things. We continue tomorrow, right? Yuri pauses and shakes her head. We can do something else tomorrow. But... I'm sorry. Wait, sorry for what? I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore, that's all. Yuri, come back. I'm sorry that I made you. Yuri leaves. You weren't making me. Sayori's left alone with her words. How does this happen? We were just having fun a second ago. Social anxiety! Doesn't have to make sense. It just exists. It's my fault. I said something stupid and hurt her. I should have just told her that I enjoyed it. But I could trust me with this. It's the only thing I'm good at. And I still mess it up. What if she doesn't want to come back? Drowned in guilt, Sayori stares blankly at her desk, spread with notes. The book sits next to them. Right. If she wasn't coming back, then she wouldn't have left the book here, right? Unless she just forgot to take it with her. Ugh, this is horrible. Was it really because she thought I wasn't enjoying our time together? Or maybe she wasn't enjoying our time together, because I'm not good enough. I probably let her down so much by having trouble following along. Yeah, I'm sure if I was smarter, she would be having so much more fun. I need to do better for her. Okay, now we're going into Understanding Part 2.
For the first time, Siori is the first to enter the club room. Anxiety courses grew relentlessly. Will Shuri Yuri show up today? Sitting at a desk, she stamps her feet in an attempt to calm down. Why am I letting this affect me so much? I'm doing everything I can to make Yuri happy. But my best wasn't good enough. But it was still my best. But I'm letting everyone down. I'm always just a disappointment. Don't say that, Sayori. Sayori continues to wrestle with her self-deprecating thoughts. Every tiny noise causes her to lift her head in anticipation of Yuri's arrival. Minutes pass. Nobody enters the club room. Not Yuri or Monica. Gosh, I'm so late. Why did I offer to help those other students with their work? I'm such a pushover sometimes. I'm going to leave such a bad impression on new club members like Yuri if I'm not the first one there. Malika rounds the corner, approaching the club room. And as she does so... Yuri? Ah! Yuri jumps at the sound of Monica's voice. She's sitting outside the club room against the wall next to the door. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the book she was reading and stands up. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry I'm late. You didn't have to wait outside for me. The door to the club room was open. It's not... Yuri stammers, unable to explain herself. She peers inside the club room from the window and looks away. Actually, I was just... I was wondering if I could help you in today instead. Yuri, come on now. Huh? Me? With club publicity stuff? Yes. Monica's utterly confused. Why is Yuri asking us all of a sudden, when she was so eager to spend time with Sayori before? Did they not get along after all? Monica looks into the club room herself to see Sayori sitting alone inside. Okay. It's kind of a simple job, but I'd be happy for you to tag along. Me too. Monica's worried, but she finds it difficult to insert herself into whatever conflict that may have arisen. It's a little ironic, she realizes, that she could be so self -con so conflict avoidant after having been in the debate club. Okay, let's take a walk together. I just let me copies of this new flyer. They go around to the billboards and replace the old ones with the new ones. Yuri nods and the two set off. The two walk in silence. Without Sayori, Monica finds it quite difficult to strike up a conversation. So, how's everything been going? Fine. That's good. Never them follow up with anything more. Monica tenses up at the stunted conversation. How like does Sayori do it? Oh, sorry I didn't see you yesterday. I went straight to the computer lab to work on the flyers. Hmm. Sayori told me. What did you two end up doing yesterday? Just some reading. Oh, I'm glad. It's really starting to feel more like a literature club now. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I felt so intimidated at first when I heard about the kind of reading you were into. But you know, it's kind of stupid of me because I'm just intimidated by things I'm not good at. And it's silly to assume that everyone who comes to the club will just have the same interests as me. Don't say that, Monica. You're good at everything. But it's so cool that you're able to get Sayori into it. It's like the club is working. I'm really happy about that. She's... not into it. Huh? She's not into it. And I'm stupid for forcing it onto her. Yuri falls silent again. As if she started her thought, but can't figure out how to continue it. Did something happen? Yuri sighs. No, it's just me. I just... Yuri pauses. Hmm? I'm thinking. A moment passes in silence, and Yuri shakes her head. I shouldn't be complaining to you all of a sudden. Don't be silly. I won't think you're complaining. I just want to make sure you feel welcome. If it's important to that, you can tell me anything. Well, I do feel welcome. Too welcome, I guess. It's not an issue of the club, it's just an issue of me. So I feel wrong to give inconvenience you with it. You're not inconvenience, we're all just humans. Just how it be. Just relax. Hang out. Ah. Monica pauses and thinks. But take your time, though. Sometimes it takes time. Well, what if we put it this way? It's my job as president to understand the needs of the club members, right? We're going to have all kinds of people joining this club. Hopefully, anyway. Maybe one of them will be our protag, named Manly. 
and <laughs> learning about the diverse needs and interests of everyone will help me come up with the club activities that everyone can be happy with. That everyone can be happy with? Not just only some people? Of course. I need to be looking out for everyone. Otherwise, what kind of club would it be? I see. Yuri looks a little more relaxed. It signals to Monica that switching from a sympathetic approach to a pragmatic one was a good choice. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Okay. Yuri takes a deep breath. I'm a really weird and awkward person. I've accepted that about myself. I just don't know how to, I guess, connect with other people. How is it so easy for everyone else? How do you just make conversation about an arbitrary topic? I can talk for hours about the things I'm into. Unfortunately, so much that I don't know when to stop. But for anything else, I just have no idea what to say. So, I understand that about myself. I'm just not good with people. I can't help it. So it feels like whenever I'm confronted with a new social situation, I'm either ignored, or made fun of, or taken pity on. And Sayori falls into that third category. She what? Hold on, you're saying that Sayori is taking pity on you? Yuri nods. I just want to be treated like a normal person. If you don't like me or don't connect with my interests, then just tell me. I can accept that and move on. Sayori is too nice to me. I'm so stupid for not realizing that she would just go along with whatever I pushed onto her. Nobody deserves to put themselves with that kind of discomfort. Just because... Because they pity some weirdo who doesn't know how to make friends. It's the worst feeling. I hate it. Yuri's sharp words cut through the tense air. Somewhere in the middle of the conversation, the two stopped short in the hallway, prioritizing the conversation over the original task. This is more important. Monica looks at Yuri. Yuri only looks down, with her fist clenched. I think... I think you should tell her that. I can never say it to someone's face. It's pathetic. Being human is communicating. Sayori's different. Making people happy is the most important thing to her. I'm sure that's all she's trying to do. So if you're able to explain to her what makes you happy, then she'll do anything to make it happen. That's the problem. What kind of friendship has one person always trying to cater to the other person's weird needs? I'm sorry. I'm making myself sound so... No, I think I'm starting to understand. Monica hesitates to finish her thought out loud. It's something that Sayori would be able to say better. Sayori is someone who will give anyone however much kindness they need in order to smile. But Yuri, who is difficulty accepting kindness, must be driving Sayori to be even more assertive in her kindness, further exacerbating the matter. Neither person is to blame, but it's an issue that can't be resolved without them understanding each other better. Sayori wants to be your friend. I promise that. It's okay for different people to have different needs. I mean, Sayori. She has her own needs, too. But good friends work together and can be what they need for each other. You just have to have good communication and talk about it. I don't have good communication. Yuri stops and shakes her head. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. My head is just... It's so resistant to everything. I'm... I'm pushing such a kind person away from me because of it. Yuri pauses to think. I'm so tired of this cycle. I'm creating for myself. I think I'm afraid of people pushing me away that I just push them away first. How thoughtless and immature of me. Yuri takes a deep breath and exhales. I didn't mean for this to turn into a whole venting session. But I understand now that I just need to communicate with her. <laughs> You're totally fine. It's for the club, remember? You're just helping make the club a better place for everyone. Yeah. Yuri falls silent again. She looks like she wants to say something. This... This kind of critical thinking is something that I'm really bad at. You know, about people. So, thank you. Anytime. Monica smiles at Yuri. For just a moment, Yuri finds it in herself to meet Monica's gaze, returning a shy smile of her own. Yuri and Monica finish replacing the old flyers with the new ones. More accurately, Monica mostly did the work while Yuri followed along. But as the club room once again draws near, so does Yuri's confrontation. I can't do this. Yes, you can. It'll be great. Yuri sighs and shakes her head. I'm never going to feel confident enough. I just have to do it. If 
I don't do it now, I never will. Yui starts towards the door, but then turns to face Monica. You're not just gonna wait outside, are you? <sighs> I can take a walk. Want me to get you a coffee or something? Gotcha, I prefer tea. I like to make my own, though, so please don't worry about it. Although I suppose that's one downside of reading here in the club, rather than at home. I don't get to drink tea while reading. Sorry. I guess it has nothing to do with this. Hmm. You know, now that you mention it, I bet we could get permission to keep stuff for the tea in the club room. You can use, like, an electric kettle to heat up water, right? Would that really be possible? Also, a coffee maker would work. Just like coffee maker ramen. I'll look into it. I think it would be great. Yuri smiles and nods at the thought. Well, I'll be back in a bit. Good luck! Monica waves at Yuri, then turns around and departs down the hallway as Yuri's smile fades once more. A moment of daydreaming about tea is enough to save her from the anxiety of the task that lies before her. But it must be done. Taking one more deep breath, Yuri timidly opens the clubroom door. Yuri! Oh, wait, wait, hold on, I'm not done yet. So Yuri shuffles a bunch of papers around. Um... Yuri stammers. Her words suddenly caught in her throat. At that moment, she realizes how Sayori has been spending her afternoon. I wasn't expecting you to come today. I was really hoping to make it all the way through the next chapter first. But I got most of the way through it. And look! Sayori holds up a sheet of paper. It's a page of notes, beautifully produced with indentations, categories, and even color coding. Wow! As Yuri sees it, her expression shifts from anxiety to despair. Because that's what Yuri was worried about, see? I was afraid you were getting disappointed in me, so I've been truly trying really hard. Stop. Yuri presses her fist against her forehead. Please stop. I can't take this. Yuri? Sayori's voice quivers in shock after having received the exact opposite response she was expecting. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sayori looks away in guilt. Did I do something wrong? I don't understand. So if I did something wrong, please tell me. Yuri shakes her head. No, it's me. I keep putting myself in these situations where people are afraid to treat me normally. If you don't like this kind of reading, it's okay. Please just tell me. I don't need to be treated differently, just because I'm weird. But I don't treat you differently. I just want my friends to be happy. So I find that we did something together that you really like. I don't want your pity! Why did I do that? It's alright. We're getting our emotions out. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Yuri sinks to her knees. Her voice squeaks. Come on, everyone, let's let's be straightforward. Come on. Let's go. I'm sorry. Tears of guilt and self-loathing begin to stream down her face. This isn't how it's supposed to go. Why is it so hard just to articulate your thoughts? Why do you end up pushing everyone away from you? Yuri's mind pounds with internal accusations as she shuts her eyes, unable to face Sayori or the rest of the world. She should leave, just escape from here, before Monica sees her like this, and before Sayori tells Monica what she did. But before Yuri can put any strength into her legs, she feels a warm pair of arms gently wrap around her from behind. It's alright. You're allowed to be human, come on now. It's okay. Sayori whispers in a soothing voice. It's okay. It's okay. Overcome by despair, Yuri finds herself unable to protest or pull away from Sayori's kind gesture. Yuri sniffles, breathing heavily through a clenched throat, trying of all her willpower to control herself. I understand. I understand that the things you're feeling in your head are different from the things you're trying to say. I know that must be what you're feeling right now. I promise I understand that. So I'll give you as much time as you need. When you're ready, just tell me your feelings and we'll talk about them together, okay? Yuri sniffles again and nods her head. She gives herself a minute to compose her thoughts, then speaks while steadying her voice. I think... I think that I've gotten so used to people being weirded out by me, that it feels like anyone who's nice to me is just doing it out of pity. I'm so horrible with people, so it makes me not want to believe that someone can actually like me for who I am. Yuri pauses, but Sayori doesn't interrupt, or if she waits for Yuri to continue. I got so excited when I joined the literature club. I thought that was finally my chance to make friends for my interests. Because my interests are the only things I know how to talk about. It's all I have going for me. But then whenever I catch myself getting overly obsessive in front of other people, it feels like I'm making a fool of myself. 
I hate myself for it. Ultimately, I just want to be treated like a normal person. But how am I supposed to expect that when I can't behave like one? I just want to learn how to get along with people and stop ruining things for myself. That's all. Yuri finishes her thoughts, feeling more steady after having gotten them out. Sayori, who can feel Yuri's breath rise and fall from beneath her arms, realizes that as well. Thank you for helping me understand you a little better. You know, you were so great at helping me while we were reading. So I'll help you with the things that you need to. But I feel like it would just be frustrating for you with how much patience I require sometimes. <laughs> that sounds kind of familiar. I couldn't stop worrying about that while we were reading. I was so afraid he would get frustrated with me. But I would never do that. I did my best to reassure you by mentioning how I have a lot of patience. Yeah, I know. But my rational fears just won't be quiet sometimes. I'm sure it's the same for you, right? Yeah. Irrational fears. Well, you know. There's no way that you could frustrate me. Because I already like you as the person that you are. I know you said you have a hard time believing that. But I promise that's true. You don't have to be a social t person for the priest to like you. I think... You really consider it in your own way, you know, worrying so much about people's feelings. We're all kind of weird. It's a literature club, haha. <laughs> but it's the best part that we're all different, and have different interests. Like about the book. I'm reading it because I want to. I promise that's what I really want. It's a bit of a struggle, but try not to mistake that for me not enjoying it. I mean, we could never discover new things if we didn't try them first, right? I want to learn the reasons that you love it so much. And in the end, if it's not for me, I could say that I'll, but I'll be glad that I tried it and learned more about you. Plus, you're like super duper smart, and I want that to rub off on me. <laughs> Yuri fights back a smile at that comment. Already, the heavy atmosphere surrounding her seems to have evaporated through the caress of Sayori's arms. Your hair is so pretty. I always want long hair, but I was awful at taking care of it, so I cut it all off. Hmm. Yuri's tension relaxes. For once, she feels okay just listening, rather than worrying so much about saying the right thing. So Yuri, sensing Yuri's comfort, lets her rest. It must be difficult for her to feel relaxed when other people. But the literature club can make it happen. There's something that she deserves to experience. Well then, based on my understanding of your feelings, I suppose I wouldn't mind if we were to continue reading. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. But we can stop at any time. But if you truly don't like it, please be honest about it. I won't be offended. Of course! I'm not going to judge anything this early on, though. So we'll just see what happens. Oh, and... Um, it's not good to touch people without their consent first. Oh, 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 no, uh, I'm sorry! I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Oh, you didn't. I mean, I suppose it was kind of nice. I was just saying... I'm back! Monica's back. Audience cheers. Yay! I haven't seen you, like, at all recently. Sayori trots over to Monica. Ah! She whispers loudly. Can I hug you? Oh, sure, Sayori. Sayori wraps her around arms around Monica. Oh yeah, Yuri, it might be good to know. Sayori can be kind of a hug monster. Rawr. Ah! Hey, don't call me a monster. Artemis is a monster. If he inherits the kingdom, it could spell disaster. <laughs> Yuri laughs. Monica perplexedly looks between the two of them and smiles. Well, I'm glad you've been enjoying your reading so far. It's like our first real activity as a literature club. Uh, about that. Well, you've been so patient while exploring my interests. I think that it would be inconsiderate of me not to return the favor to you. I learn about the things that you like. Yes. Do you like poetry? And so another one gets looped into the poetry route. Yuri smiles. Be positive. I believe in you. Swimsuit, sunscreen, bucket, towel, floaties. This is pretty nice. Oh man, it's that famous S. All right, and now we're going to do the respect side story. It 
It's been several weeks since the club has officially started. For their initial setbacks, the three club members so far, Monica, Sayori, and Yuri, have increased their collective bond within the club. Sayori has partaken in some of Yuri's high fantasy literature, and all three of them, led by Sayori, have taken interest in poetry. On a day like any other, the three find themselves suddenly interrupted by the club room door opening. And in walks a girl none of them have seen before. Hi. I smell anime fan. Sayori tugs excitedly at Monica's sleeve. Yuri shifts in her seat and buries her eyes in her book. Are you here for the literature club? I mean, Doki Doki Literature Club, trademark? Yeah. I think that's great. Thanks for stopping by. This is gonna be about, this is my guess. It's gonna be, she's gonna come in like, oh yeah, I read a lot of literature. Here's some manga. And then Monica's like, that's not literature. And that's gonna be the, the arc of this whole thing. It's kind of a small club still. So it's really exciting to see new faces. Yeah. Come sit down somewhere. You can sit next to my desk. So Yuri prances over to her desk and presses her palms onto it. Oh, and Yuri can make you some tea. Ah! Uh -huh. Yuri looks up to Sayori and protests for having drawn attention to her. Now sickly silently, silently glances between everyone, then sits down next to Sayori. Monica follows by sitting nearby. Then the sudden gathering prompts Yuri to stand up, deciding that standing in this corner and making tea doesn't sound so bad after all. Okay, then how about we all introduce ourselves? Okay. Well, I'm Monica. I'm the one who started the club. I was originally in the debate club, but I really wanted to do something I felt more passionate about, if that makes sense. I'm also best girl. So I started the literature club as a way for people to express themselves through writing or reading or whatever other kind of literature. You know, I figured it was your club. You have that vibe. Oh, I have what vibe? Oh, you know, like... Uh, never mind. I'm not gonna judge people I just met like that. Very adult like you. I always judge people so hard. Oh, no, you don't, Sayori. Yes, she does. Yuri's deadpan voice carries across the room. Natsuki giggles. I'm Sayori. I just like learning about everyone and making friends. Oh, and I also like poetry. Oh, yeah? Very adult like of you. <laughs> I'm an adult. The sound of Yuri's electric kettle is steaming up fills the room. Oh, that's Yuri. Sayori lowers her voice. She's kind of shy, but she's really nice and super smart. She likes big fantasy books and tea. I love her. Well, I guess that leaves me then. I'm Natsuki. I like listening to music and hang out downtown and stuff. And my favorite ice cream flavor is strawberry, because it's like my hair color. Oh, let's get ice cream. My favorite cup flavor is probably cookie dough, or maybe chocolate. It's cookie dough. And Monica's is probably, probably vanilla. It's actually pistachio, excuse me. <laughs> what the heck? I take way too many online quizzes. The ice cream ones are always accurate. What's Yuri's favorite? Natsuki shrugs. Probably green tea. <laughs> I'm just joking. I have no idea for Yuri. Still. It's pretty chill here. Do you just like hang out or do you actually do club stuff? Oh, well, we do club stuff too. It just hasn't been very structured yet. Since we only have like three members. So we kind of just loosely spend our time doing the stuff we like. But I keep thinking it's about time we start with like some more structured club activities. It's been a while by now since I started the club, so yeah. Well, with that being said, what kind of literature are you into, Natsuki? Anything you like the club to get into? Don't say manga. Uh, well, I guess I'm... Literature... I like manga. Manga. Hey, why'd you say it like that? <laughs> I want to read manga in the club. Wait. Hold on a second. That sounds so great. Like, after all I've been doing all this, um... He returns to the desk of a tray of key cups, which he sets down on an empty desk. After all the deep and immersive reading I've been doing, I wouldn't mind doing something a little more simple. Manga isn't simple. If you think that, you just don't understand the nuance. Uh, I didn't mean simple like that. Well, anyway. Putting manga aside, is there any other kind of literature that you're interested in? Well, not really. In that case, have you considered the anime club? 
Are you serious? I'm not gonna join the anime club. Those plebs. It's full of... weird guys. Come on, is it that big of a deal? Manga is literature, right? I told you, alright? I know, I'm downloading these storylines in my head. Um... I mean, I guess you could see the literal definition of literature, then technically... I get it. Look. Do whatever club activities you want. Can I please just join? I won't bother anyone. If I could just, like, keep my manga here and hang out after school, I'll do literally whatever you want me to do. That's fine, right? I don't want the sneak of manga around here. Yeah, I guess there's nothing wrong with that. Oh my god, thank you. You're the best. I have most of it crammed in my locker, so I'm gonna start getting it, okay? Wait, wait. Natsuki stands up. Need some help? No, I got... I don't want you to see my locker. <laughs> if you say so. But there's no way it's worse than mine. Sayori, they're into anime. It's worse than yours. I hope we never find out, then. Natsuki exits the club room, leaving everyone in silence, save for the sound of Yuri sipping her tea. Ugh, oh, I'm such a pushover. Hey, it's not that bad. Natsuki seems like a lot of fun. Maybe, but I mean... She has, like, no actual interest in literature, you know? That's normally fine. But she said she would participate in club activities like it's some kind of obligation. Her tea's gonna get cold. Yeah. Wait, that's not related. Well, I think everyone deserves a chance. Especially if they can bring her- if we can bring her happiness. Besides, maybe she'll take a liking to literature. Are you sure you just don't want to read her manga, Sayori? Hey, who do you think I am? Sorry, I didn't mean that. I just feel really uneasy about this. Do you have any opinion, Yuri? Not particularly. She said she wasn't gonna bother anyone. That includes me, so... Does that mean I bother you? No, you're a pleasure to be around. <laughs> I was just fishing for a compliment. I know. But still, I really think we should give her a chance. Yeah, alright, but you're cleaning out the anime stink. But I really am I gonna start enforcing club activities. I'm willing to co cooperate. Suddenly the three of them hear a thump against the door. What was that? Sayori stands up and walks over to the door, then opens it. No, Sayori, no! Ah, thank you. Carrying three boxes was a presumably manga. Natsuki grunts and wobbles inside before slowly bending over and dropping the stack onto the floor as gently as she can. That's quite a collection. Sayori giggles in excitement. While catching her breath, Natsuki replies. There's still one more box. I can put them away myself. I know how to organize them. Monica anxiously glances between Sayori and Yuri. Is this really okay for the club? Maybe it's what she needs to really kick the club into gear before everyone gets too complacent. It seems like things are finally going to start getting more serious. At the next club meeting, Monica is the first to arrive. But ever since Natsuki joined, she feels a lot less relaxed. Why am I so nervous? Monica paces trying to figure out her feelings. Natsuki said she wasn't going to bother anyone, so why does it feel like the atmosphere has changed so much? Well, Monica thinks, the club door opens, revealing Natsuki carrying a box. Monica forces a smile as Natsuki makes her way to the closet. Natsuki forces one in return. Need help? No, I got it. Monica awkwardly tries to start some kind of a conversation, but fails. Curious, she peeks into the closet where Natsuki is stashing all of her manga. Once dull of school supplies, the shelves are now vibrant with bright colors and cute, cool-looking artwork. You know, the top shelf is pretty empty. Maybe we can keep it up there. Excuse me? I can reach up there. That would be so inconvenient. But then I wouldn't have to look at... I mean, yeah, but... Monica sighs. The teachers are going to ask what all this manga is doing in here. And I have to tell them it's for the literature club. So? Monica backs off and slumps into her desk. With this kind of tension, it feels like the relaxed atmosphere accumulated over the past few weeks is being sucked right out of the room. Good afternoon! Sayori so spins into the club room. Oh, I see someone's in a good mood. Yeah, because I have this. Sayori so brandishes a cookie wrapped in plastic. I found some money and got a cookie. Ooh, that's so pretty. 
As Sayori trots over to the closet, the colorful shelves catch her eye. Which one do I start with? Well, you can start by giving me a bite of that cookie. No way. I said all my luck to find that money. If you want entry into my kingdom, you need to pay the tax, peasant. Boo. Defeated, Sayori unwraps a cookie and breaks off a piece for Natsuki. Then Yuri suddenly walks into the club room. Monica glances through her pleading eyes. Yuri returns a quick nod of understanding. Well, everyone's here now. Despite the club only having one more person than before, it somehow feels twice as lively. Okay, so I think today we should go over some potential club activities and see which ones we want to do first. We have four members now, so it'd be great if we found some stuff to do as a group. Does that sound good to everyone? I agree. Okay, so I have some ideas of my own, but I want to hear your ideas too. Well, I've been having a lot of fun learning about everyone else's interests. Maybe we can each give a person a day to share their favorite kind of literature with everyone else. Well, maybe. Something tells me that. Monaga glances at Yuri and Natsuki, who both appear very unwilling to even consider each other's interests. Maybe we can try to come up with something that everyone can enjoy equally. You know, like we all vote on a book to read or something like that. I think we should all collectively try to expand our interests, rather than just stick to the things we're familiar with. Why does it feel like I'm being targeted here? Natsuki, didn't you say that you would go along with whatever the club wanted to do? Well, yeah, but that doesn't make it okay for you to ignore everyone else's preferences. I like Sayori's suggestion. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but... Uh... Monica's voice trills off. Although she let Natsuki join the club, Monica finds it incredibly difficult to relent to her demands. If Natsuki doesn't respect the club, why should Monica have to yield to Natsuki's opinion on anything? Natsuki, are you sure you don't have any of the other literature interests you could share with the club? I swear I don't mind if you keep your manga in here, but I just... Natsuki cuts the Monica off by suddenly standing up. Well, it's obvious that I'm not wanted here, so I'm just gonna leave. But I really would have appreciated you being more upfront about it. Okay, I think you're kind of jumping to conclusions here, but you're free to do whatever you want. Yeah, that's right. What you gonna do about it? Natsuki shoots Monica a quick glare before walking straight out of the room. Oh no. Sayori runs after her, leaving just Monica and Yuri. Just Monica. Ha ha ha. For a second time today, Monica slumps down into her desk. Why am I such a jerk? No, she's a jerk. She's just making me feel this way. Monica looks up at Yuri, seeking affirmation. Yuri looks away. She probably just went around looking for the smallest cup she could find so she doesn't have to be participate. How does she expect me to give her respect when she has no respect for the club? Am I wrong, Yuri? I'm not... I'm not good at these things. Monica sighs. Me neither. I just have no idea what to do. I don't want to hurt anyone. I feel like it's not wrong to enforce the club vision. You know, like, people should join because they want to express their passion for literature. Or at least develop it. So maybe she's not a good fit for the club after all. Monica senses silence, afraid to accept her tentative conclusion. Yuri looks tense, but she doesn't seem to want to add anything. You can't... Sorry. You can go back to reading. I know this doesn't concern you. It does. It does how? Well, I just can't comfortably read in an atmosphere where the peace has been disturbed. Oh. Well, great, I'm just reading the whole club then. That's not an accurate conclusion to make. I know, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of voicing my frustration, and I guess guilt. It's like my frustration wants to blame her, but my guilt wants to blame me. Ugh. Why is it hardest to be the rational during the times you need it the most? I don't think you're being irrational. I think Natsuki is. She's no afford to walk in here and make demands of the club. Your club. Something as ridiculous as manga has no place here. The fact that you're even storing it for her should make her completely indebted to you. Well, you're right, but... And so begins the Yuri Natsuki rivalry. I don't know. Is it kind of harsh to say things like it's ridiculous and it has no place here? Do you not feel the same way? You've been doing everything you can to avoid associating the club with it. So I assume you feel the same way about it. That's not true. Well... Recalling her confrontations with Natsuki, a realization starts to sit in. Uh, you may be right. 
I mean, if it was anything besides manga, would I really be acting like this? Maybe I've just been convincing myself that it has nothing to do with the manga. I'm really upset that I would let myself do that. With a sigh, Monica walks over to the closet. She finds herself staring at the colorful shelves. It's just, this really wasn't what I had in mind for a club about literature. There shouldn't be anything wrong with that. Monica starts defending her position once again. It's a complicated issue that Monica had failed to consider before now. Where's the line even drawn at what's considered literature? Lost in thought, she reaches into one of the larger box sets and pulls out a volume, expecting it for no particular reason. The cover features four girls striking cute and exaggerated poses, all dressed in short skirts. Yeah, I mean... Amused by the absurdity of the cover, Monica opens the book. And now we're going to do Respect Part 2. This sucks. Why is Monica such a jerk? She should be grateful I even joined her stupid club. So that she can find any members. Monica's usually really nice. She cares so much about everyone in the club being happy. Yeah, right. Well, she usually does. Maybe when she's not busy being so judgmental. So what if I'm into manga? Why can't just one person accept that? Instead of being so condescending about it. I accept it. I think it's cute. Oh, come on. That's condescending too. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I just want to support you. Natsuki sighs. I know. Thanks. It just really sucks. Do you want me to talk to Monica? I don't know. It's not like it's going to change her opinion of me. Like, even if we convince her to back off, that wouldn't suddenly make me feel like I'm actually welcome in the club. I should just find another club. Well, you don't have to do that. We can figure this out, please. I mean, I'm the vice president. Or at least I think I am. And I don't want you to leave. Everyone deserves to feel welcome. And to be happy. So I want to make that happen for you. Um, I was wondering. What was the reason you decided to join the literature club? Well... Natsuki hesitates. Friends! It's kind of dumb. Aw, uh, don't say that. Don't tell me you saw it in a manga. There's no such thing as a dumb reason when everyone is welcome except that. It wasn't welcome. You were to me. So... Just don't tell anyone, okay? Especially Monica. I promise. Natsuki sighs. I'm just tired of everyone judging me all the time. I can't enjoy any of the stuff I'm into without people making snotty comments about it. Not that I care about what anyone else thinks. But you know, the signs for a literature club said that you can be yourself or whatever. So it said it was at least worth a shot. But that was a lie, apparently. Natsuki dejectedly kicks a toe for a shoe against the wall. Oh, and I like writing too. Really? How come you didn't say that to Monica? Because she's being so judgmental that I didn't... I just want to tell her something that she wanted to hear. She didn't deserve that kind of satisfaction. And if she knew I was into writing, then she'd just be like everyone else and try to push me away from the manga and be from the more mature thing. Hmm. It is true. Monica would have done that. She would have been like, Let's get you into a proper thing like writing. It would get that stink of that mm, manga out. Yes, for a little bit of writing, and a little bit of soap, and a little bit of scrubby scrub, perhaps you too can smell less anime. The two of them remain silent for a while. Sayori understands that it's out of the question for Natsuki to return to the clue club room for today, at least. I almost said clue room. <laughs> Makes me think of clue. It was it was Monica and the with the with the wrench and the. But Natsuki has a reason for wanting to join the club, just like everyone else. It's part of the club vision for her to be welcome. You deserve to express yourself as much as everyone else does. That's supposed to be what the club is for. So, I'm going to do everything I can to fix this. I promise. It's lunchtime the next day. The cafeteria and hallways are bustling with students rushing to meet with their friends. It makes the most of their limited break time. Where could she be? Among them is Monica, who always eats lunch in her classroom, but she has some additional business today. Fearing Natsuki would avoid coming to the club, Monica decided to try to find her during lunch so that she could make amends. 
After searching for an extensive time, Monica finally spots her. Despite her short stature, Natsuki's bright hair helps her stand out from the crowd. Oh gosh. Suddenly feeling awkward, Monica's afraid to get closer. Natsuki is with some friends who Monica doesn't recognize, and they're all energetically chatting together. I bet they had anime and manga. But if you see that, I'd be like, I need to comfort her. I need to welcome her mog in the club. It'd be really tactless to just interrupt them. Oh yeah, did you end up joining that literature club or what? Oh, of course I joined, why wouldn't I? Huh, I told you she would join. Oh, come on, you know she only joined because you wouldn't giving a crap about the anime club. I told you, I never wanted to join that stupid club. Oh, sure. We have to give her some credit for at least making an effort to finally grow past that trash. Ah, oh, true. Well, congrats on finally graduating middle school, Natsuki. We're proud of you. You guys are friends? Shut up. Just let me do my thing. I'm just joking. You know we love you. Yeah, once the literature club makes you a famous writer, we'll be the first ones to buy your book. What? You can buy your smutty fanfiction? Don't you question smutty fanfiction. Oh, <laughs> well, obviously. I want a signed copy. That's like years ago. You don't think I'm grown out of it by now? I told you I was joking. Besides, it's a good reminder of how far you've come since then. Not to mention you couldn't have done it without us. That gives us a pass to joke about it. Yeah, sure. They grow up so fast. It brings a tear to my eye. Nancy like suddenly glances in Monica's direction. Probably Monica to quickly turn away and distance herself. Whoop, 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 whoop. What the heck? That was horrible. I should have said something to defend her. Why do I have to be so conflict avoidant? See, I told you. I'm in the brain of the Raiden. Not that I deserve to say anything. I'm hardly better than them. After the way I treated her. Ugh, I'm so awful. I'm not doing anything right. After school ends, Monica distractedly makes her way to the club room. She finds Yuri already inside. Eyes on the book as usual. Monica picks up a desk and slumps into it. Something she seems to be doing rather often lately. Yuri, I don't think I can be club president. I suck at handling anything that doesn't go, like, exactly my way. Yuri looks up from her book. It's like, the literature club is a place where you get to express yourself. Unless it's a way that I don't like. I'm so mad at myself. And I'm especially mad that I didn't have the self-reflection skills to realize what I was doing. So much for maturity. Sorry, I really shouldn't be complaining out loud like this. There's just, like, a lot on my mind. No. Hmm? I enjoy listening. Really? Mm-hmm. Why? Yuri shrugs. It just... makes me feel nice. Oh, well, okay. I guess I'll just continue then. Yuri nods. Yeah. I just... well... Natsuki has kind of a blunt attitude, you know? It made me feel like she wasn't taking the club seriously. I couldn't even figure out why she wanted to join. I saw her friends talking to her in the hallway during lunch. They were just so mean to her. Telling her to grow up and stuff like that. That the literature club would help her grow out of her manga. It just made me so mad. Like, just let her enjoy it. It makes her happy. Why are you trying to take that away from her? And when I had that thought, it was when I came to the realization that I was kind of doing the same thing. Just in a roundabout way. I should have made her feel good about being passionate about something. But I just dismissed it. No, I was actually trying to avoid acknowledging it at all. I even did that with you, Yuri. When you first joined the club. You... You did? Yeah, I remember. Fantasy isn't really my thing. So I was kind of trying to di dismiss it. But then Sayori jumped in and took over the conversation. I should have reflected on that. But I didn't. Because I just let Sayori handle it instead. And now, I'm repeating the same mistake. Except, I really hurt someone this time. Monica shakes her head. I'm so tired of being afraid of things I'm not comfortable with. It's so stupid. Like, I can just picture how much joy it would bring Natsuki if I let her share her passion a little. I'm so angry that her friends were treating her like that. I'm gonna get them back for it. Get them back? Yeah. I'll get them back. But making sure this is a literature club that Natsuki wants, not the one that they want. I wonder if, like, Natsuki was outside listening. We'll see. Suddenly, Sayori bursts through the door, making Monica and Yuri jump. With a rare stern face, she marches over to Monica's desk and sits down next to her. I'm having an intervention! I can do that because I'm vice president. Is this about Natsuki? Yes. Yeah, I know. 
I messed up. I'm super sorry. I was just talking to Yuri about it. R really? I was so dismissive of her passion that she felt friend and probably just unwelcome. And then I hope I did like this kind of voice too and was like, get the stink of the manga out of this room. That was pretty, that was probably pretty bad. So the opposite of what the literature club is supposed to be. I really need to make it up to her. Oh, hey, I did it. Oh, thanks for your intervention, Sayori. I'm glad we're on the same page. Friendship wins again. So how do you want to make it up to her? I have a plan. Sayori, do you know if Natsuki's coming to the club meeting today? She's... I don't think she is... I see. Monica was afraid of that. Not because of her plan, but because she's facing the consequences of the damage that she's inadvertently caused. Are we all going to cosplay our favorite characters? And have a theme day? No, that would require new sprites. Or new CG. Hmm. The only way to do that right thing is to face it head on. It's so easy to just duck away from conflict and wait for it to blow over. But that's not enough. To truly respect someone's feelings after you've hurt them is to face them and admit your wrongdoing. Not the wrongdoing of mismanaging the club, but the wrongdoing of disrespecting Natsuki's feelings. Okay, you think you can get her to come to the meeting tomorrow? I can do that. Okay, awesome. Yuri, you don't have to worry about anything, but thank you for being my friend. You're a good listener. Mm-hmm. Fishing with her hair, Yuri turns away to hide a smile. Well, I guess for today, it's going to be a pretty quiet club meeting. I'm going to step out for a bit. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm just going to read with Yuri. Hey, is this one of Natsuki's books? How come it's out here? Sierra picks up the manga that was resting on an adjacent desk. Oh, that? Um, Natsuki probably just left out by accident. But I thought she has to be coming to the club? Actually, Monica's been... Okay, Yuri, I'm sure it was just someone else who was using this classroom then. Okay. Monica smiles at them both. Then with a wave, she exits the club room. I really shouldn't have left that out. If Sayori catches on, she'll definitely tell Natsuki, and that would get really awkward. Now, I wonder if there's a keyboard I could borrow from the music room. Oh, you're going to compose a song! The time for the next club meeting has already arrived. Monica and Yuri are the first to arrive. I'm so worried. Do you think Sayori's going to be able to bring Natsuki? Yes. How do you know? Because no one can ignore Sayori. Well, she's say <laughs> She's Sayori. <laughs> yeah, you get the point. Huh. You know you're right. Time slowly passes. Monica sits. Then sits up the pace around and sits again. Yuri's eyes don't move from her book. Then the door finally opens. Sayori so marches inside. Behind her, Natsuki shovels inside, nervously looking around the room. We're here. Welcome back. Monica, the club president, stands up and greets him with a smile. Sayori so picks a desk and takes a seat. Natsuki sits closely next to her. Looking back and forth between the club members, Monica is struck with a nostalgic feeling. She would stand at the front of the club room just like this, struggling to picture just who may eventually be sitting before her. But imagination was never enough to predict just how unique and diverse each member would be. Each of her own struggles, her own reasons for seeking the vision that Monica had, admittedly so vaguely and advertised. Seeking trust, understanding, respect, what new lessons will be the future hold for the literature club? Realizing, realizing she's getting ahead of herself, Monica takes a deep breath and returns to the present. Okay, everyone. The literature club is starting. We have an activity planned for today. Manga turns around the face chalkboard. On it, she writes, MANGA, in big letters. Today, we're going to learn from an expert about a unique form of literature. MANGA. Oh, come on. This is kind of forced. I know you don't actually want to do this, so just... Monica shakes her head. Natsuki. This is the hardest part. After making this far, it'd be so easy to just smile and move on. But that's not enough. Not this time. I'm sorry. It was wrong of me not to take you seriously when you were kind enough to show interest in my club. I thought about... 
and I realized how biased I was against manga and anime. It caused me to disrespect you, and I'm sorry. But I think you deserve to be able to share your passion with us. So I can make it up to you? Well, thanks, but... I know you only do this because Sayori told you to. Wait, that's not true. Monica planned this all by herself. I didn't even get a chance to talk to her. I was witness to that as well. This is the literature club- I mean, the Doki Doki Literature Club trademark. The literature club is a place where everyone gets to be themselves. We all have our own interests and our differences. It's my vision to let us freely express that. And it's my goal to respect everyone for them. So I just want to learn about the things that make you happy. I think that you deserve to share that joy, as much as everyone else does. Is that okay? Natsuki looks away and hesitates. But... It's really dumb. The stuff I'm into. Monica smiles. She kneels in front of Natsuki's desk, looking her straight in the eye. If you like it, then it's not dumb. Oh, except for me. Sayori, you're not dumb either. Haha, <laughs> what the heck. You guys are so weird. You don't know a half of it. Fine, I'll show you some of my manga. Only because you admit that it's literature after all. Natsuki stands up. Oh yeah, I didn't say this before, but... I'm actually into writing too. I'm kind of a pro. I didn't want you to like me just for that. Well, really? I really did have you all wrong, Natsuki. Yeah, whatever. Today's not about that anyway, right? It's about manga, so I hope you're ready. We're gonna marathon fire punch! A week has passed since Natsuki returned to the literature club. And then we're gonna analyze Shingeki no Kyojin's ending 50 times! Since then, the club activities have had been in full swing. Each club member had received a day in the spotlight to share all their favorite kinds of literature with each other. As another meeting draws to a close, Monica approaches Natsuki on the way out. Natsuki, are you in a hurry home or anything? Me? Not particularly. Why? Oh, there was just something I wanted to show you. We had a few minutes. Sure, what is it? It's not in here. Can you follow me to the music room? The music room? Why? Well, you'll see. You know, I was thinking back. When the club was just me and Sayori, we would talk about how we envisioned the club to turn out. We cared a lot about being a place where people could express themselves. And she said something strange to me. She said that I was trying to make the club that I need myself more than anyone. But I think it wasn't until you joined that I fully understood that. Because you really taught me a lot about myself. Like things that I was probably always too stubborn to admit. Oh come on, you can't mean that. I didn't even do anything. I just like, brought a bunch of manga and I got fussy when it had my way. It was really stupid of me to make such a big deal out of it. No, honestly, I, I honestly needed it. If you didn't express that you were hurt, I would have never realized that I did something wrong. Communication! Besides, your feelings are valid. They deserve to be heard. And respected. It's just really hard to find, feel that way sometimes. You know, like, I really shouldn't care about what other people think in the first place. But when you're just criticized by everyone around you for being a certain way, it can get really hard to just brush it off. And it makes you start to feel like I'm the problem. Like I'm not doing enough to please everyone else. Just be you. I'm being too entitled if I just want people to like me, with me having to be like hide a bunch of stuff about myself. I don't think I am. I just wish that sometimes people would try to appreciate me for who I actually am. As Monica listens, she recalls vividly how Natsuki's friend were treating her, and how naturally they did so. How long has she been fighting against that, refusing to change for others? I could only wish I was as strong as you are, Natsuki. You're so honest with yourself. I'm like, always trying to come off as a perfect for other people. Anytime there's like a hint of contention, I just crumble. But thanks to you, that I really started thinking about this stuff. You really inspired me to start working on it. But, well, I, I, like I said, I didn't even do anything. You were just being yourself. That's all you need to do. Also, there's someone else. Something else, rather. Hmm? That's something that someone else doesn't come until later, till the main route. Monica takes a breath. Uh, the thing is, I might have read a little bit of your manga. What? You? What the heck? Why didn't you tell me? Okay, Natsuki, slow down. Slow down, we're just taking out- we're just dipping our toes now. I'm sorry. 
I think I just felt like kind of embarrassed to admit it. After I gave you such a hard time about it. Ha ha ha. I can't believe you of all people were reading manga behind my back. That's so funny. Yeah, well... I just flipped through one of them out of curiosity. But I ended up reading a whole bunch of it. But I mean, one of the characters was in the literature club. What are the chances, right? You're reading Parfait Girls? Well, you have a good taste. Yeah, just one volume. And I kind of just picked it out randomly. Well, you have good intuition, then. You have to tell me all your favorite parts. Ha <laughs> ha, uh, this is a bad idea. Whoops. Well, I, I think it was some kind of weird fate. Because the character isn't just in a literature club. She also plays piano. It's just weird because I've always wanted to learn piano. She was like, the perfect person that I always wish I was. I just did what I wanted. Instead of always second-guessing myself. Monica walks over to the piano and sits down. I always felt like I should only share the absolute best parts of myself. The parts that will impress people and make them like me more. But after you join the club, I really realized how self-destructive that mentality is. We share things because we want to express ourselves. Sharing inexper experiences allows us to share emotions. And I just felt like, like I want to show you this because if it wasn't for you, I never would have started playing. <laughs> I think I... I think the credit for that one goes to the Parfait Girls, not me. No. Well, maybe it's true that the Parfait Girls just put the thought in my head. But it was still you who inspired me to keep practicing every day. Every day? Because, you know, you just make me feel like if I want to do something, I should just, just do it. I mean, I still haven't been practicing for very long. And I'm really not any good at it yet. Like, at all. But I wrote a song for the club. And I worked really, really hard on it. It doesn't have any words or anything, but, well, yeah. That's all. That was so good. It was? Yeah, are you kidding? You're already like a pro. Oh, I'm not even close. Does the song have a name? He said it was about the club, so... Um, Doki Doki Literature Club trademark? Yeah. It's called My Song, Your Note. Oh yeah, that song. Because... Everyone brings something so unique to the club. It's completely different from how I first imagined it, I think. But I was like... Such a selfish, selfish perfectionist. It shouldn't be about me. It should be about everyone. And it's all of you who helped shape the club into what it is. I would never change that. Well, I think that's really thoughtful. And kind of flattering. I kind of feel like I don't deserve this much validation. I wasn't exactly very patient either when I first joined the club. It makes me feel like I should probably be apologizing too. I think I was just really fed up with a lot of things, and I got frustrated after not getting my way in the club. So, yeah, not like I like you or anything. I really didn't mean to take it out on you. I was being really immature. <laughs> if you get into my stubborn but but to apologize, I guess you're doing something right. It's fine. I'm past it too. I think we're already even. 
but it's really sweet that you were thinking about it. It takes a lot of maturity to reflect on that kind of thing. Well... Well, I wonder who I got it from. Hmm? Oh, never mind. Well, anyway, for even as long as you let me keep my manga in the club room. You did admit that it's a form of literature. You totally can't take that back now. You got me. The closet's all yours, but you gotta keep it closed so the manga does stink don't come out. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll bring in a little something for the club tomorrow. I want to do something nice in return. What kind of little something? Oh, you'll see. But don't think you'll be disappointed. Cupcakes? The next club meeting ends up being a particularly tasty one. Yeah, it was cupcakes. That unlocked... That one... And that one. So that is not all side stories, I'm pretty sure. I think these are counting as... Despite them being sectioned in parts, I'm pretty sure it just counts as like three different side stories. We'll probably unlock three more after we continue for the game. So the next part of the side story saga will be in a separate video. So that means we're going to return back to the main game, play a bit more of the poetry, and then come back and finish off the last of the side stories.